So I, I will talk about the contents of Scilab software to just to summary what uh, Scilab is able to do, what problem it can solve for you. I first talk about the Scilab system, the environment, then a few words uh, on the language, a detailed uh, the main functionality will be detailed, and then a short comparison between MATLAB and Scilab, very short, because I will talk in more detail of the comparison in the next talk. The system. There is pre-binary version which are available on the Scilab website for Windows, Windows system, GNU Linux systems, HP, HP computers, and also a contributed version for Mac OS X. And for other systems, or if you want to customize your Scilab, it's also possible to rebuild it directly from the source, as it is given with as open source software. And uh, under Windows, this can be done using the Microsoft com com compilers, including the last one, Visual Express, which is free. So it's not, you are not obliged to pay license to Microsoft to compile Scilab. And also, if you want to have an efficient computation, it's uh, preferable to use Intel Fortran compiler to compile the Fortran part of Scilab, because part of Scilab are, are written in Fortran, in particular the numerical al algorithms. And under Linux, you, are, you may use the traditional GCC and GFortran compiler, but also it's possible to use Intel compilers. And for the other Unix-based system, you need X window for, for computing Scilab, for compiling Scilab, and also either the GNU compiler, either the vendors compilers. So it's in general easy to do because there is a configure and make file which allow to, to recompile it easily. So in the Scilab envir environment, you dispose of a, a full online help which give help on any words which are defined within Scilab. Each function, each operator are, are, are explained. The help is a <coughs> hypertext and most of the help files contain examples which can be run. Today, the help is complete, but it is the quality of the, the help is not so good. It should be improved. There is also an integrated text editor, which allows to type Scilab functions, Scilab scripts, and this editor is a colorized one, and it's also a support for a debugging tool. So it's possible to set breakpoints, to remove them, and to uh, execute the code under control of the debugging tool. There is also to numerous demo demonstrations which allow you to learn how to use Scilab, what Scilab offers to you. So there is a, f a quite complete set of demonstration illustrating all of these tools. And there are also a lot of tools which allow you to extend Scilab, to add new toolboxes, to add, add new libraries, C or Fortran libraries for making other computation. So there is a tool which, which uh, simplifies the rating of interface. Interface is the code we have to write to between a library and the, and the Scilab function. If you want, for example, to, to create a, f um, a new computation function, you have to write a small part of code which connects the library with Scilab. And this code can be automatically generated using an interface generator in the simplest case. There is also incremental linking capabilities which allow you to load incremental load toolboxes. And there is also tools for C and Fortran library buildings. And these tools are very useful to not to take care of the underlying operating system. Few words on the language and side language. As Claude said, there is due to the historical Origin, there are many similarities with MATLAB. 
but Scilab and MATLAB, but Scilab is not a MATLAB clone. For programming, you have all the vector and matrix operations which are very similar to the MATLAB one. You have most of instruction of control for, while, if, select, try, catch. You have also, it's also possible to define functions, sub, scilab functions, scilab fun, sub functions, and libraries of functions. So it's also possible if you want to have a, to rule yourself the errors, you, there is error management tools. For example, if you want to catch an error and do something else, when an error occurs, it's possible. There is also many supported data types like matrices and dimensional matrices which may contain double precision number, integer number, long or short integer number, Boolean, Boolean value. There are also true matrices of character strings. So, and uh, there is sparse matrices for to, to make computation of very large matrices. And there are also high-level data structures like la list, type list, and for MATLAB compatibility to objects like cell and structs. Also a set of functions to manipulate files to get data or to put data on files. And this file can be formatted or binary files. It then c they can be in C or Fortran type this, in particular, for binary files, it, this has uh, special meanings. C in Fortran does not store the, f the data in the same way. There, are the, there is a special function to save all Scilab functions, all Scilab variables within a file, in a binary file, like this MATLAB save function, and this variable can be loaded again into Scilab. All this, all the data types may be saved this way. Also, there is some dedicated function to read, for example, Excel files, MPS for sparse linear system, matrix market files, or to read and write MATLAB binar binary files. This is important for interoperability of, of two softwares. I, only, I previously noticed that there is also a debugging tool and uh, there is uh, a tool for code optimization. If you have a, a code which, which seems to be slow, you can analyze it to, to view where are the, the weak points and improve them. And it's possible to, to set breakpoints to remove them and also to, to do profile of your functions. Scilab is also an open system, open in the direction of all other languages like uh, the shell under Linux or Windows, TCLTK language, Perl, and um, now Java. It can be easily interf it can easily interface external code. This code may be written in, in Fortran, in C, in C++ or Java. And um, so you can easily generate dynamic library without taking care of the operating system. There is an API library which will you to, to write your interfaces if you want to, to write fine interface written manually. There is an API which can be used. Now this API is not well common, documented, but there is a lot of examples available. And there is also a compatibility library with the, Max, the MATLAB MEX file. So in most, of, in most cases, it's possible to import MATLAB MEX files directly within Scilab and they run. This, the first part was how to call external program with Scilab. It's also possible to use Scilab as a computer national engine. For example, if you have your own program and you want to uh, use Scilab, for example, for a, a plot to use the graphic, it's possible to call Scilab within your own code for graphic or for either computation. A brief tour of Scilab functionalities. So you have, as Claude already said, you have a, a new graphic, comp quite um, flexible for 2D and 3D graphs based on a flexible ob object-oriented graphic environment with many available high-level functions for 2D, 3D visualization you can draw curve in Cartesian or polar 
coordinates, you can draw histogram surfaces, you can also plot uh, ISO value curves and uh, miscellaneous representation of surfaces. All these graphics can be exported to and on PostScript file, and then meta file for Windows system, or bitmap version like GIF or PPM or P PPM. Yes, <coughs> there is a graphic property editor which allow you to modify all the property of the objects. So once you have drawn a graphic and you have some detail you want to change, for example, the thickness of a line or the color or its color, it's possible using the graphic editor to select the. The, the line and change interactively this property. And there are also many specialized visualization functions like for CACSD, for signal processing, for graph and networks representation. In this graphic, it's also possible to perform animation if you want to make a moving curve, moving surfaces, or more complicated animation, it is possible. There is also a graphic user interface library which allows you to create menu and dialogue with the user. Uh, so there is a, a short library with the essential function like uh, sending a message, like getting a value, which are pre-programmed, but you can also program yours using the TCLTK interface. It is also possible to track all the events which rise in the graphic window and make uh, some call to attach some callbacks to these events for any for doing uh, something. For the um, to to ease people to simplify the life for people coming from MATLAB, there is also an emulation of the basic MATLAB function, UE control and UE menu which are devoted for um, addition of um, graphic user interface. And for complex graphic user interface, you can use directly the interface with TCLTK and maybe use VTCL to create your graphic user interface and then write the callback in Scilab. A second important library is the li linear algebra library which is based on LAPAC and BLAST libraries, and which uh, gives you the possibility to make all the, all the computation on li linear system. Solving linear systems, least square problems, eigenvalue, eigenvector problems, subspace computation, projection, computation of various factorization like SVD, sure, sure factorization, QR, Cholesky, and also part for sparse matrix with di direct or iterative algorithms. There are also univariate polynomials toolbox which support polynomial matrices, but here the computation are done on the coefficients, are not symbolic computation. So it's possible to do basic arithmetic, compute the greatest common divisor, the least common multiple, to perform spectral factorization, inverse <coughs> computation, evaluation of polynomials. And you have mainly the same thing for matrix of rational fractions. There is also a small statistics toolbox with the basic statistical functions, mean, variance, standard deviation, and so on. A large library for cumulative function distribution and their inverses, for example, the beta, gamma, normal, Poisson distribution student, binomial key two, and uh, also a various set of random number generators, maybe floating point numbers or fixed number using many distribution laws like beta, binomial, key two, and so on. And there is also a toolbox with high level function for statistics, which, which is coming soon and developed by companies which we, we intend to contribute to Salem. There is also a signal processing toolbox with all the basic computations, correlation, covulation, covulation bias remove, removal, and uh, the way to compute analog, analog and digital filters. It's also possible to filter signal, to do spectral estimation, time frequency analysis, 
and the, the basic transform for signal like FFT, DFT, Hilbert transform, multidimensional FFT, and so on, and also linear model identification. There are a toolbox for simulation of differential equation, either for explicit system ODEs, based on the AudioPack library, which supported stiff, stiff or unstiff systems with uh, or without zero crossing detection, so it's possible to, to stop the simulation when uh, <coughs> a function uh, comes to zero. And there are also fixed step methods like Ranch Kuta and uh, a function to solve multi point boundary value problem when you have ODE with um, constraint on, on the boundary. It's also possible to solve imp implicit system or DIE using das PK and das RT, which has they solve var um, new versions. This uh, function enable to compute initial feasible point and also to, to rule the, the zero crossing detection. There are also functions for minimization for linear and quadratic problem with constraints. In the case of dense matrices for sparse matrices, this is the contributed part. And there are also tools for nonlinear minimization, differentiable or not, with bounds constraints. And um, some other functionalities, 2D and 3D interpolation, approximation, nonlinear function for zero compu uh, computation of zeros of nonlinear function, of set of nonlinear functions, Psychos, and Ramin will talk about that, which is similar to Simulink. There are all the CSCSD classic computation and also robust approach and LMI optimization. This part is quite obsolete and need to be rewritten. There is also a way to, to do parallel computation, today based on an interface with PVM and uh, we have uh, an interface with MPI which is on the way. There is a, gr a toolbox for graph and network computing And uh, a small interface with uh, symbolic uh, computation tools like Maple and NewPad. It's not as integrated as in MATLAB. You need to, to pass through files, intermediate files, but it's possible to, to make Maple, for example, do some computation, get the result in, into Scilab. So a few words on MATLAB and Scilab. So many similarities due to their common origin main difference is the way that uh, MATLAB and Scilab handle functions. In Scilab functions are variables or data types like other like matrices. So it's possible to interactively define the function in, in the Scilab console. And um, it's also possible to, to load files, external files, but this can be done when you want. There is no automatic mechanism to to load function in Scilab. By default, it's possible to create libraries which allow you to do that, but by default, function may be explicitly loaded. Some basic function exist in the two languages, like some prod, but have a little difference on the semantics. For example, in MATLAB, you, when you write sum of A, the result will the semantics of the function will depend on what A is. If A is a vector, the result of sum is the sum of all the elements of the vector. But if A is a matrix, the result is the sum of each columns, the vector which contains the sum of each columns. In Scilab, there are only one empty matrices within a matrix with the two dimensions equal to zero. In MATLAB, it's possible to create empty matrices which has one dimension equal to zero and the other one not zero. It's, the, the MATLAB search is a little better. Many, di many different in the way the variable are, s uh, on the scope of the variable, the way the variable are seen within a function. In Scilab, if you refer a variable in the function and the variable is not defined in this function, 
So I'll be is able to, to look for this variable in the calling environment. And if the variable exists in the calling environment, it's possible to read it, but only to read it. It's, it's not possible to modify it. Just a few words for people who want to go from MATLAB to Salem. I don't explain how to do the, the reverse. Just the way from MATLAB to Salem. We have developed a tool to help MATLAB and to help the translation from, of MATLAB files to Salem. This tool is named mfile to SCI. And the main difficulty we have to solve with this tool is the problem I, I mentioned just before of uh, the basic function semantics. So for a good translation, we need to infer the type and dimension of the objects we are working on. <coughs> Takes all the MATLAB syntax into, is able to read all the MATLAB syntax. It's able to translate all the operators and most of MATLAB built-ins. The, the, the graphic user interface function and some graphic function are, miss, are still missing. And there is also, we have also developed at this, at this time uh, a dictionary which compares MATLAB and Scilab, and this is dictionary is available on the Scilab web pages to help for migration. And this finished and finished.